I've often thought that I can sum up the years after our son Peter's diagnosis of Tourette syndrome, when his symptoms were at their very worst, with some of the opening lines from Charles Dickens' great novel, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the spring of hope, and it was the winter of despair. In fact, it felt like a strange new world we were entering. Getting that diagnosis when Peter was 11 years old solved a great mystery for us. The mystery of why Peter was acting so weird and getting so mad and upset all the time. So in a way, it was the end of a search for answers. But it also, of course, was a new beginning, like walking through a door into a strange new land Tourette syndrome land. I kind of felt like Lucy in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, walking through the back of the closet into the land of Narnia. Tourette syndrome land is a land of unpredictability. It's like theater of the absurd every day, where the veneer of polite society gets stripped away and you get to experience what real, raw emotion looks like. It can be scary and very hard sometimes, but it's also a really good opportunity to grow as a human being. My son's suffering can still be really overwhelming for us. And especially when he was in his early teenage years, his tics and his anxieties and his obsessions and his anger made our life pretty much spin out of control. And that was exactly the problem. I was no longer in control. I don't think I was ever a huge control freak, but I know that I spent a lot of energy in the first half of my life making sure that the image I projected about me was a very, very positive one. And having a family member with Tourette syndrome does a really great job of removing that for you. Peter's physical symptoms often don't allow us the luxury of pretending that everything is just fine, thank you, even if we want to. Many of his tics, which have come and gone and come back again over the years, have looked very peculiar and some of them even disturbing, like tapping on walls wherever he goes with his fingers or stamping his feet or clearing his throat really loudly over and over and over again, or making a sudden loud barking noise. I've been in shopping malls and watched people stare, and I've sat in restaurants and noticed how uncomfortable everybody around us is. It hurts your heart to see that. But all of those experiences forced me to deal with one of the biggest obstacles in my own emotional and spiritual growth. Worrying about what other people might think of me. Peter had his own crazy obsessions, but I realized that this worry about how people might be judging me was my obsession, and it had to go. Along with the mask of total self-sufficiency that I was hiding behind. It was painfully obvious a lot of the time that we actually weren't doing well and that we needed help. And you know what? Through all our struggles and trying to figure things out and talking and talking and crying and giving up and starting again, relationships with our family and with our extended family and with our friends and in our parish and with neighbors, all those relationships have gotten deeper and stronger. It was like when we admitted to people that we were having a hard time, it was like we were opening a door and allowing true community to happen. But I still grieve for the suffering that my son experiences and the misunderstandings that he encounters. I know how generous and kind he is and how funny he is and how smart and talented. Those are the things people don't know about him 
when they see him and hear him walking down the street or in the mall, and when they make their false assumptions about him. But I guess what I'd like to say to other parents who are starting down this road, who've maybe just gotten this diagnosis, is that we've experienced some really good things in Tourette Syndrome land. For me personally, it was like God took all my ideas about how spiritual and wonderful and in control I was, and he dried them up and he blew them away so that I could have a different and a better way of living, a simpler way, almost, almost a more childlike way, to just live in the moment, to quit worrying so much about so many little things, because it doesn't really help to worry, and to find joy in those, those little triumphs, like Peter having a good day. And when we're not having a good day and things are going badly, I've learned that it doesn't help to try to deny it or hide it or even necessarily to fix it. I'm learning that it's better to look at the mess and say okay to the mess and then try to see the bigger picture beyond the mess. And part of that bigger picture is that I also see really good changes happening in our whole family. We're quicker to open up our hearts and express what we're really feeling. And we don't care so much about things like privacy as we used to. We welcome other people into our lives so they can help us and so we can help them. We've learned to be more patient and forgiving with ourselves. And somehow that seems to have just naturally extended to being more patient and forgiving with others. We understand what it means to hit rock bottom and have a really humiliating and crappy day. But we also understand how super important it is to help each other to regain hope and start over again fresh. We still get sad sometimes and we can get pretty angry and loud sometimes. But you know what? We don't hold grudges for very long. And we say, I'm sorry. And we say, I love you a lot in our house. It's a pretty crazy house. But you know what? I wouldn't want to live anywhere else.